I wanted to take a couple of minutes and do a quick run through of some of the functions that came out in version 44, specifically some of the ones that I worked on. I'll let Gil or Sean explain uh, the others. A couple of quick ones. Um, I want to show the, the metronome. I want to show the import notes. And I want to give you a quick rundown on the color curves. Uh, so let's do them um, in order. Uh, let's go and create a new sequence first of all. Okay, that was very slow. Uh, we'll go and animate a sequence, 20 frames a second. I want to go into timings and do a new... Um, in here there's now this metronome option. Um, what the metronome option lets you do is it pops up this additional dialogue where you can go and specify a timing that you like in milliseconds. Now it needs to be a multi, uh, multiple of the base timing. So this is 50 milliseconds, so it has to be a multiple of 50 milliseconds. If you don't make it a multiple of 50 milliseconds, it will round it to the nearest one. So if I want a timing mark every second, I put a thousand in, I click OK and done, and I come over here. And now I have these timing grids which are set up, if you zoom in a little bit, uh, every second, five seconds, six seconds, seven seconds, and so on. So now you can create any arbitrary timing grid that you want without having to resort into some tricks of editing XML files and the like. So hopefully that will help. Uh, the second thing I'd like to show is, uh, if you remember in the piano effect, um, and I'm sure hardly anyone uses it, but there are these options here where you can choose a whole bunch of sources. Um, I want to get away from this. I actually want everyone to use the timing track source, but in order to do that, I need to replace this Audacity timing file, MIDI file, and uh, the polyphonic uh, transcription. And the way I've done that is by a right click here on the timing track, I've added this import notes. And by clicking import notes, you can come in here and it basically is the same options that you have down here. You can choose an Audacity timing file, the MIDI file or the music XML file. Um, you can't select polyphonic transcription here because I haven't got an audio file loaded. If I had an audio file loaded, you would be able to select that. Uh, you can nominate the name of the timing track. Um, so you can actually import multiple timing tracks uh, and give them different names. Um, I've also added the music XML file format, which is a new format that we haven't supported before, which is a, a music publishing format that describes um, the notes that are played and when, etc. Um, but let's do a timing file, because um, that's probably the one you're most familiar with. Uh, so here it is. Um, um, and we click OK, and it brings in that timing file from uh, which I created in Audacity as a notes track. And then I can take my piano, uh, stretch my piano out across it, um, and if I set this to be using that notes timing track, um, if I zoom a little bit in on here, you can see that it's actually encoded into the timing track all the keys that are being pressed and they're playing up here on the piano. Uh, the beauty of this method over the previous one is having imported things, I can actually go in here and edit things. I can move the timing track around if the timing's not quite in sync with your song and things like that. Um, so it gives you a, a greater deal of transparency and flexibility. Um, not only that, but having done this, uh, when you save the sequence, the timing grid gets saved and you don't have to keep on reprocessing the audio or reloading the MIDI file or whatever else. So all around it's really good. Um, I am going to simplify the piano options down and remove all of the, the non-timing track related options here in the next um, release probably. So anyone who's using piano, I suggest in this release that you do hop in, create a notes timing track, change this to a timing track and, and set it up that way. Uh, so that's two of the things. The final one I wanted to show you was colour curves. So uh, I'm going to create a new sequence, get rid of all this rubbish. Um, so here we are. Let's imagine. Um, let's imagine we've got uh, a bars effect here. Um, all right. So it's going along, and you know you're all familiar with setting the colours and everything else. 
So what I've added is what happens if you actually wanted the colour to change during this uh, sequence or during this effect duration. Today, or up until now, there's been no way of really doing that. Yeah, you could break it down into smaller sections and you could try and drop different effects on. But with something like a, a, a diagonals effect, uh, that spirals effect, that's not possible. Um, so what happens if I wanted all of these things to um, tend to blue? So start at red, green and white, but become blue over the course of the sequence. So normally, as you'd be familiar with, if you click on the, the colours here, you pop up this dialog box and you can choose the colour that you want each one to be. Well, now what you can do is you can right click on them. He says, oh, OK. Well, he's very slow. Sean did warn me that it was quite slow. OK, Th there's a reason why that happens and it shouldn't happen. Um, I will fix that in the next release. It will work, it will just be a little slow to come up. Um, so what you have here is you have a colour curve. So at the moment it's all black. If you double click on this uh, here, when you select it, it turns yellow to show that it's selected and you can change the colour. So this was white, so let's make it white and it changes everything to white. You can also move this side to side, which doesn't really do anything exciting. But what you can also do is you can click elsewhere on here. And what that does is it inserts another one of these markers, which I can move to the end. I can double click on it and turn it blue. So now I've got a color that starts white and turns blue over the duration of the effect. Um, so I can click OK on that. And now if you watch it, as you can see, the white is now turning to blue as the effect runs. Um, I can do a similar thing with each of these others. God, this is worse than I expected. I will fix this. Okay, there's, there's a reason why it happens and it shouldn't happen. So this is the red one I think I clicked on. So we'll start it at red. Uh, we're going to end it at uh, blue. So that looks good. So now you notice the reds and the whites drift to blue. And finally, we can change our green ones. Back comes. And we can set that to blue. And now we've got a bars, uh, sorry, spirals effect that starts three colors and fades to blue. And you end up with the uh, three blue bars. Obviously, if you wanted to fade it a little bit earlier to blue, you would just move the sliders along accordingly. Um, this slowness is going to get very annoying very quickly. Um, but if you wanted it to turn blue and stay blue, you could, for instance, bring this back. So now it turns green to blue in the first half, and then it will stay blue through the end. Now you can have up to 40 different colour stops on here. Um, the other thing you can do is rather than a blend mode, you can go with a none mode. So it starts green and it stays green until it hits the colour change and it turns uh, a colour change halfway through. Um, so you can get something like this. It stays green, it stays green, it stays green, and then suddenly it turns blue. So hopefully that adds an extra dimension uh, to colour on your effects. Um, You'll find that most effects are, are pretty much uh, work correctly with it. Um, I had to make some changes to some effects to get them to work, but, but pretty much everything up here, the on effect now acts almost like a color wash effect. Uh, if you use the, the color curve, uh, the bars will work. Uh, the butterfly works, but only if you choose uh, the, the palette option. Uh, obviously, otherwise it's not gonna pick it up from the palette. So you can see here, they're all drifting and then the green will cut to blue, as you'd expect it to. Uh, the circles should work correctly. The colour wash will work, although it's kind of pointless. Um, the curtain effect definitely works. DMX and faces, uh, I don't think so. Uh, fire, definitely not, because fire has the hue shift rather than the colour shift. Fireworks definitely works. I had to rework that one to get it to work. Uh, Gladiator won't. Uh, most of these others do. Um, 
Uh, even the piano effect will uh, use the colours to change the colours of the buttons and the like. The pitches effect will ignore it, um, as will probably the A, uh, the state effect and the video effect also won't recognise it. But pretty much everything else will. The text effect will, so the text will change colour over the duration of the effect as well. So hopefully that adds an extra dimension to your sequencing and maybe you can create some, some new and interesting effects. Thanks guys.